Hi y'all, I'm Hannah. Hi everybody, I'm Jordan. Hi, I'm Anne. Hi, I'm Marie, and we are coming to you live from Austin, Texas because it's Happy Wooly Wednesday! Hey everyone, happy Wednesday, Merry Christmas, and it's Happy Hanukkah right now yes, too, yes. right? Which is not something I know a lot about. <laughs> <laughs> but for whatever you're celebrating, we just want to wish you super happy holidays, and thank you for being here with us today. This is what we like to do on Wednesdays, is hang out with our friends, and you're going to get to hear from everybody today. You guys, what are you working on today? I am working on some of our horse hair. We just got a bunch more in, and I'm bagging it up and getting it ready. Very nice. MC1 uh, Earth Tone Studio Pack right now. Very nice, very nice. <laughs> And uh, Apple Orchard Specialty Designer Pack. Woo! Apple yeah. Orchard, good! These gals are the bomb! They make everything happen and all your orders go out on time! <laughs> We're gonna get started, y'all! Have fun! Thank you for being here with us, everyone. And you know what? We actually have a special guest today. I'm gonna let him say hi. Oh, I'm not. Here, everybody! I brought Speedy to say hi to everyone. He's the new shop dog, so Speedy's been coming to work with me every day. He's super, super shy, stays super close to his mama, but I want you to get to see him. He's in here with us today, so he's gonna help us with our Wooly Wednesday broadcast. If you are brand new, this is what we do on Wednesdays. We are Living Felt, we're based in Austin, Texas, and we'd like to spend this hour with our friends answering questions that you've submitted in the past and during the broadcast. Today we're going to do some demonstrations and you'll probably notice that as people are joining they're saying hello and where they're from. So let us know where you're joining us from and I'm going to queue up my screen. Did everyone love Speedy? Yes. <laughs> we had somebody ask if he's a rat terrier. Oh he's a rat terrier. Yep he is a rat terrier. He is I think he's 16 this year. His birthday is uh, in just a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. He's my grandpa baby. So glad he's here with us and I'm glad you're here with us too. Here's what we have planned today. Um, some of y'all have been asking about doll hair, doll hairstyles and beards. So we're going to look at that. We're going to answer questions on, well, we're going to do a, just a quickie show how to uh, do paws on an animal or a dog. And then also the question was, it was the double D. So it was Donna Dudrier, right? And Diana Densmore asked how to um, do detail on their animals. So I'm going to just do a quickie demonstration on doing some detail on your finished pieces. And then um, there's the fiber fork. So we'll get to that. <laughs> but before we do that, we have our countdown to Christmas. And Nomi Nome says it's 11 days till Christmas. And the reason we wanted to bring that forward is to encourage you to get your Christmas orders in. Um, we do priority mail shipping, first class mail shipping, and we do have the express mail shipping, but it's super expensive. So if you're trying to beat the snow or the crowds in the mailbox, order early to get your Christmas presents made. Most of you all know we ship same day or next business day, and if that's not gonna happen, you will get a phone call from us and we'll let you know why or work with you to get that out. And what else did I wanna say? Oh yeah, your wish list. So it's a great time to tell your friends and family uh, what you want if you want something from the Living Felt store with your wish list. And I think in the last newsletter we shared how to do your wish list. But you have to have an account, save items basically to your wish list like you're shopping, and then you can share that link with your friends and family. So now's a great, great time to do that. So Terry says she got her order in. Tammy, hi, from Oregon. Marjolene is in the UK. I know you guys are probably getting sleepy there. Thank you for being here with us. Kate, oh, Kate says she has a rat terrier too. How sweet. And Carol, hi from Florida. I know there's so many of you here joining us. Thank you for being here with us today. And has something to show you, a request from... Um, She'll tell well, you. The request came from uh, Kate Williams and her son Xander. They picked some colors in our MC1 line and then wanted to see how they look together. So here's <clears throat> and some of our MC1 pinks. We have orchid here, soft pink, powder pink, sorbet, and red indigo. We've got pomegranate, black cherry, berry, tulip, and wild berry. One second, can you zoom in a little bit? And in a little bit. Perfect. Alrighty. Cool. 
And she wanted to see which colors together. Oh, I think she was oh, looking at it's. I think it's yep. these three. Mm -hmm. Good. If you want a close up of those, just just let us know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good. Yep. That's awesome, Anne. Alrighty. Wonderful. Great. She says he wants them all. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree. I agree. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Anne. Let me take those. <laughs> Super cool. Very good. Um, so that's, we always like to do color requests if you ask and try and show you what those are. And if you have a color and you're trying to figure out what color it is, you can email a picture of it to customer service. It helps us if we see it with your hand or with another color other than black or white because those two are hard to compare. Now was it Shelly Boggs? who asked about how to clean a drum carter. So Shelly, if you're watching, you asked how to clean a drum carter. And I have normally a carter, a hand carter, whether it's hand paddles, uh, a blending board, which I brought in today, or a drum carter. Very often you get some kind of brush with it. Um, and if you don't, if it didn't come with a brush, and here's an example of the brush, and here is our blending board, it, Usually it'll come with a brush and you can use the brush to clean. You can go with the grain or against the grain. But sometimes we get these little Neps and Angelinas in our cards. Can you see those, Anne? And they're kind of hard to clean. So we have what is known as the fiber fork and it lives in the drawer next to the drum carter. And I just run it through and pull everything out. On the, on the cards, on the drum carters, I can run it across sideways. It just depends on the direction of the teeth. But this really helps pull stuff out that is bound in there. So get yourself a fiber fork. It's a super cheap fix. <laughs> and also sometimes like a hair pick or something that you might find at the, you know, in the hairbrush aisle or something like that can be a help. <laughs> so that's my quickie demo, the fiber fork. <laughs> Okay, are we doing good? Doing good. Okay. So, it, there's no training required with the fiber fork. That's one of the real benefits. So it's kind of a self, you can kind of figure it out once you get it. Now, I had another, oh, two more quickie uh, demonstrations. Um, this one actually isn't a demonstration. So it was Charlene Lundgren asked earlier in the group, whether the CX2 White and the Core Wool felt together. And some of y'all who've been around for a while know, this is the size of a sample I make when I'm testing two fibers together. So on this side is a little more yellow, that's the Core Wool, and on this side is the CX2 White. Um, and if you're gonna test, you should always test how fibers felt together, how they behave by making a small palm size sample before you endeavor on a big project. And so I just want to show you these two do felt together, but definitely do your tests really small before you endeavor to spend a lot of fiber on a big, big, big project. Okay. All right, so quickie, quickie how-to on dog paws. And I brought in, oh, well, it happens to be Speedy is with me today. So I brought in this beautiful gift that I received from Irene Clark. She made this just from photographs of my dog, Speedy, and he lives here in the shop, now with Speedy also. Um, and she has a great example here of dog paws, so I wanna bring in those real close. Can you see them, Anne? Where do I need to go? Forward. Can you see the paws? Yeah. Okay, so look how beautiful those paws are. They're really well done. They're nicely defined. And then I have a little tiny dog um, to show you on. This little guy, here is an example of a little tiny dog paw. This one is done and this one is not. So can you see him? Can you see those paws? Okay, great. So to make those paws, I'm gonna use uh, actually a different color because that will help show. Using our MC1, whether your dog paws are little tiny or great big, uh, you can use whatever you have, in, uh, like um, a toothpick or a bigger skewer, it depends on what you're making. In this case, I'm gonna make just a tiny little roll. And um, hopefully you can see, I'm gonna roll it right on the end of my needle and I'm just gonna create a little tiny, Anne's helping me focus. 
we're just doing this before turning the camera. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to create like a little tiny noodle. And depending on how big your dog is, is how big you will make your noodle. Spin it around. Thank you. Spin it around. This is our, this is our focus hand. <laughs> okay, spin it around and slide it off. And this might be a little big for my dog, but you'll see by demonstration, what you do is you're going to put it on the paw and the needle felt it top and bottom. And if you look close, so it's going to go around like that. And then you'll wrap wool over the top around this part to cover up those joints. So that is how you do it without a long demonstration. That's how you do a dog paw. Practice. Practice on like a, you know, not a real dog like this one. <laughs> Just make some paws to practice on. That's what they're good for. Okay, is that helpful? Hi, Maria. I'm trying to see who's all, who's all chiming in with us now. There's Joyce. Hi, Joyce. Hi, Leslie. Welcome. You're not late, darling. You can always go back and watch the three minutes we've been on already. Okay, so we've done... We've done a few things already, and I'm going to do one last quickie demonstration before we get to doll hair or hairstyles, and that's going to be putting a smooth finish on a critter or a face. It doesn't matter what it is. You can get a really smooth finish with your needle felts if you have the patience and the intention. I think it requires intention, attention, and then the willingness to actually execute and do it. So what I brought in is my, I probably showed y'all to this before. I meant to post this as a little uh, tutorial and I just haven't gotten around to it uh, for a little fox like ornament. And he's really very small and I haven't nerded out on him completely, but he's pretty smooth. As Does he seem smooth? He's pretty smooth as far as things go. And of course his body is core, our core wool. And then this is pumpkin spice on the outside and CX2 white on his tummy and tail. I found it helpful when you're wanting to get a smooth surface first to make your piece fairly firm because it, so he's fairly firm. I'm kind of squishing on him and you see that he won't squash down. And the point is, it doesn't matter what the underneath looks like. If it's fairly firm, it could even be rock hard, then you're minimizing the amount of compression available when you put that top layer on. So Anne's gonna turn down for us here and we're gonna look at, just want you to zoom right in on him. Okay, perfect, I'll be right there. Okay, so it doesn't matter whether this is core wool or another color underneath. I'm gonna move my little platform over. Is that good, should I go up here? Okay, how's that? Perfect. I'm gonna actually put the same color on top, but I want you to see that we can patch it in with the MC1 because it's such a short fiber. We can patch it in and we can tack it on with minimal needle marks because it's so firm underneath. Now, of course, I'm using our 42 triangle, which is a great surface attack needle. And I'm going to just lay this flat on there and tack, 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 real, real shallow strokes. Once you get that all laid down, notice that where the edges come together, you don't go against. Instead, blend them out, blend them out, blend them out so that you don't see the join. And some of you have already mastered this and some of you are brand, brand new. Now, notice how you can kind of see the needle marks a little bit. When you are just got time and patience, sit and just tack. Don't think about getting rid of needle marks. Think of bringing the rest of the wool down to that same level of depression or compression, whatever that, whatever's more meaningful to you. And then you, once the wool is laying down, you can also vary your angle. Rubbing, some people like to rub the surface, but if you rub the surface and the wool fluffs up, then it's not down enough in the first place. And that won't serve you well over time because the fiber will continue to pill. So you want it to be really flat before you rub it, and then it won't pill up on you. So just when you have the patience to sit and really work the surface, this is all I do is shallow, shallow strokes because it's the very tip of this needle. You probably can't see in there, but it's the very tip of this needle that where the barbs are. And you can just use one or even two of those barbs with these shallow strokes shallow angles, and then vary the angle so that you're coming at it from different sides. 
And this is how I smooth out all my critters, all my faces, all the tiniest things. And that's it. So Anna, let me know if there's any questions on that. The, the one thing I want to say about that is I notice that when I'm doing a picture or something, it's the areas where there's the most fiber that they tend to be the smoothest. But that isn't just a rule of thumb. You also have to use a fine needle. Because if you're using a really coarse needle, it's going to leave great big marks. Alrighty, and Sharon Smear asks, if you keep tapping at the surface, will the piece get harder? It will, it will, but um, it definitely, when I do a face or something, I don't make it rock hard because I want there to be receptivity for all the fiber that I'm gonna put on top. And I don't wanna have to battle that under layer. But mind you that you can have a loosey-goosey piece and just work the surface like this. Like some of my little dolls here I made so fast because I was making for a workshop. They look pretty smooth, but they're not as hard. So it's possible just to smooth, the, smooth that surface out and not make the piece rock hard. So if the core is not hard, doing this shallow shallow is not going to make that inner body hard. I hope that answers the question. Because it's not driving down to the core, it's just doing the surface. Any other questions? No questions. Diana Densmore shares that she's impressed that you have the control to do that bare fingered without unintentional stab. Oh, <laughs> I'm watching my fingers. <laughs> I'm watching, I'm watching. Thank you though. I, I've told the girls that I don't bleed anymore. It's kind of sad, but true. <laughs> After all these years of folks, I don't bleed anymore. Okay, so we're gonna look at um, doll hair. I'm gonna show you some doll style, doll hair styles. And we're also going to look at how to apply the hair. And I have a few different models for that. So let me just show you a few different hairstyles. And then we'll talk about how to apply hair. And I want you to feel free to ask your questions. Anne is also taking down names of everyone who contributes or asks questions. And all of those names will go into a hat. And we're going to give away some prizes at the end. And, um, Maria Cohen asks, is there a Fox tutorial? This one, you know what, Maria, uh, give me a little bit and I'll put him up for free. I'll definitely put him up for free because he's just so fun and easy. He's like a great plastic practice project. Be something to fun to give as a gift and a great little tree ornament. So just give me a little time and I'll try and get him up for free because I have all the photos with that intention. And worst case scenario, I'll do it like we did uh, wet felting the stuffed kitty and the ghost and at least I'll upload them to the group so y'all can have them. Okay, so let's look at some hairstyles. Um, I brought in a lot of Santas and so we'll look at beards, but someone asked, and I'm sorry I don't remember who, what was the best fiber to use for beards, and my or Santa beard specifically, and my response was whatever you like, <laughs> whatever fiber you like. So these are all fairly different. These guys are Cotswold, um, this guy is Cotswold and Border Lester. These are long Teeswater locks. And I've mentioned to you all before that you know sometimes you get sometimes you get the ability to get some locks and you like them. Don't wait because you know critters are sheared every year and and the you know the great locks sell out and the white white locks sell out. So we don't. I'm not showing these to pitch locks because we've sold through all of our pristine Santa locks more than a month ago, <laughs> right? And we just got bought out sheep after sheep after sheep. Um, but definitely collecting locks is a great thing to do. So these locks are the same as Alda's locks, which I then hand dyed. Um, these locks, I can tell you what they all are. These locks are from black nose sheep, which my friend Monica sent me from Switzerland. And some people call them black face in Scotland, but there in Switzerland, they call them black nose. Um, and so these are the baby finest ones. You know, they're those real mop head looking sheep that have the big black snout. Just adorable. Um, these are alpaca. These are Surrey alpaca that I washed. So they're really long and straight. These are BFL, blue faced Lester. Little curly, spongy almost. This was made for us by Sue Gray, gifted us this, and I would say these look like Border Lester locks. They look like our Border Lester. 
So I think it was Judy, somebody, Judy Stadola, someone asked me when we're going to get our lamb locks back in. So we have a variety of lamb locks over time. And what's happened is all of the locks that we're getting from the farms now are more yellow. And I'll show that to you just so you think about it. Um, when it comes to Santa, I can get kind of nerdy and want them white, white, white. But this is like our latest stock and it's just one sheep. And so when we sell out of these, we'll be out. But you can see that they've got pretty golden tips and they're not super white. So traditionally, we dye these um, because they're not the purest white. But what we can do is go ahead and get them ready for sale and bag them up. And we'll put them up and make sure you know that they're not pristine white. And we'll be glad to sell them to you if you want them like they are. Okay, just so you know, they're not going to be the whitest locks. We're kind of out of those. So I just wanted to answer that question of what locks to use for Santa, and I say just have fun with that. They can be straight, they can be curly, it doesn't matter. So play with the variety, if you will. And let's look a little bit, I'm gonna show you just some hairstyles. Are there any questions or anything coming up? Um, yes, we've got quite a few. Uh, okay. A couple of people have asked, what is the best needle to apply the locks or how do you apply them? Yep, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you how we do that. We're gonna, we're gonna do some together. So let's just look at some hairstyles pretty quickly. This one would be, I think today, the Hannah. <laughs> this is the Hannah. So this is just New Zealand Coriadel in, what do we call it, Marigold? What's it called? Is that butterscotch? butterscotch, sorry. So this is the Hannah with the little braided locks and you can see the division in the back. This is kind of the Anne if her hair was straight, because Anne's got the rock and roll bangs. <laughs> and does her hair show up, Anne, on the screen? Can you see the divisions? And it looks like hair, you know, kind of. It's not just sitting on her on her head as a great big flat thing. This is Merino Top. This girl is New Zealand Coriadale. This little girl is MC1. This is caramel, and I'm gonna show you how I make these great big spongy looking locks, which are kind of fun, they're kind of fun to do. And her hair is just tied, tied back. This little girl is just sporting the hair in a knot. I, I meant to clean hers up. She's got like the wind, you know, the wind in her hair, and she's just sporting a knot in the back. It's sort of Marie style there. Here's this big doll that Grigory Kluchnichik made for me and so this is like my hair I can only get her in so far because I have a big tower of foam here but you can see her hair is like the hair in my dolls with divisions and a part and it's tied a knot in the back this is definitely merino top and he has it treated with some kind of stiffener you can see it so I would think about that before applying it because it's leaving a white film which soon will match my gray when I stop <laughs> when I stop coloring my hair Here's my mama doll. Now she's sporting a little librarian bun. And this is made with our Adobe Merino Silk Blend. Pueblo, Pueblo sorry. Adobe, Pueblo Adobe. Adobes are in the Pueblo. <laughs> and then I made some simple guys. This little guy is sporting the flat top. And he is made with MC1 batting and this is a blend of black and dark chocolate and then this last guy he's just kind of chill and he's got a real typical average joe hairstyle and you can see when he's up close he's collected some stuff you can sort of see the you know a little bit of a taper on the back and a little bit of division which i cut now, often when I do dolls, I just stick on locks. I just stick on locks or whatever. I mean, I'm real plain Jane myself anyway, except if I had hair, I would have all this hair. And so <laughs> I love just putting locks on a doll. But if you want to do, whether you want to just put locks on a doll or do a hairstyle, it'll really help um, if you layer the locks and get them so that they really cover the head. And we're going to look at that. My example for you is my my wild child i made her just for you so that you can kind of get an idea 
<laughs> she show? You could kind of get an idea of how to apply locks. And I figured this way you would see a lot of separation in her lock. So she's like, I don't know who she'll become. This is our new uh, peach, by the way. This is peach. This is our new peach skin tone and this is peachy. You see them side by side. So this hair is all merino top. And I'm just gonna get in here and show you that it has been applied lock by lock. Can you see that, Anne? Lock by lock in layers. Can we kinda? Yes. Okay, lock by lock. So she has lots and lots of layers of locks around the front of the face, and I'm gonna show you how to apply them, but around the front of the face, you'll wanna think about the direction, and you might even wanna think about having some shorter pieces. And, uh, Maria Cohen asks, where do you start, face or scalp? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you, and I think, I think it doesn't necessarily matter, um, because I work various parts at one time. So let me show you how I make these locks, and let's apply some hair to a few dolls. So I'm gonna have Ann um, turn the camera down. We're gonna do this guy too. Let's see. And she's gonna, I'm gonna actually put this down. Are y'all doing good? Oh, hi Kelly. She's not too far away. Okay, let me see what, okay, very good. Now I wanna show you how I made those locks, whether it was the MC1 locks or the, um, the MC1 locks that were the caramel color or the one on my wild sort of Tina doll. This is just, you know, it's more than a staple length, you can see by my hand. And each of those locks, although the one on this, you know, crazy, crazy lady are blended before I do this part, this is all I'm doing. I do this like right on my lap while I'm watching a program or TV, whatever. This is all I do is just kind of nap it up. Now this is the same way Stash's hair was made, although it was made with a mixture of batting and merino. So you can just make tons and tons and tons of individual locks, and I promise you it's gonna take way more than it seems. <laughs> way more. Now you can also twist the ends, twist the ends together. So when we're applying the hair, and I hope we're not too close, maybe I, maybe I need to come down one and I will come down and see how we do. And someone asks, what is the green sheet? Oh, this was just, I put this, this is just felt, and I put this down so that the fiber doesn't snag on the foam because sometimes it wants to. This one isn't, but sometimes the fiber wants to snag on the foam. And I just use like a fabric pillow or I roll on my jeans or whatever. So this is just a piece of felt. Is it too bright? I don't think so. Okay. Um, Someone asked what fiber that is. This is just merino top in milk chocolate. This fiber right here is merino top in milk chocolate. And so when we put it on the doll, and this head isn't quite finished, but when we want to frame the face, let's say this is the face right here. When we, here, I'll give her eyes. She can have eyes. <laughs> okay, these are her eyes. Now, she's got a lopsided eyes. What? A couple people are commenting no. What? Um, I and I missed the question. But they're commenting no. No can see real well. Okay. All they right, can. So we're we're good. Okay. Yes. When I apply these locks, usually I'm going to anchor it in the middle, right here. I'm gonna start at wherever the part is when I'm applying a lock. It doesn't matter whether it's a lock or a, you know, a lock that I've made, a lock of hair. Right now I just have my 38 spiral. I didn't even prepare myself for needles. And I'm going to needle felt right in the fold, anchor it in. You can use your 38s or your 36, and then fold it over. So we're gonna do this across the doll, fold it over, and you can use this needle or you can use this needle and then tack it down so that it's not sticking up. And what I'll do is I usually decide how the hair is going to be parted like this, and then I'll build up from under here 
and build up from under here. So I'll put a row down here. Um, I'll put a row down and then we'll fill in. Now this one I left empty so I could kind of show you. Uh, I didn't go all the way down on her because originally I was going to put her hair up and I just had so much fun filling up her head. But notice all these fibers laying down. This is the folded part of each individual lock. So each individual lock, these are really long. So in this case, I'm just putting the end. This is the whole lock. I'm putting the end on here. And you don't have to do this, but if you fold it under and then fold it back over, it's gonna give it more volume. That's what gives the hair volume is that fold. So I like to start at the face and try and build the character, but then I'll just fill in, usually going from the bottom to the top. So this is one example of super wild hair. Let's look at working with locks, locks on a face. Go ahead. And for, for using that method, do you ever needle felt the roll before applying it? Do you I ever don't. wet felt it? I don't. I don't needle felt it, but I may, you can damp felt it. Like you can just moisten your hands while you roll. So let me show Stash's locks. Um, I'll get Stash in here. You can see Stash. Is he okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. So his individual locks are super, super tiny. And this is uh, batting and our spice merino silk blend. So you can see the colors are really quite different. And each of his individual hairs were rolled just like I showed you, but I moistened my hand while I worked with it to get it all to lay down. So have a little sponge or a little cup of water with you, and then you can just moisten each one. They are not wet felted into any kind of real dreadlock. You know, they're not like smooth or hard at all. I just wanted them to hold together and have texture. Yeah? And Sue asks, how would you make that wild hair lay flat? This particular wild hair, if you want it to lay flat, if you want this to lay flat, one, I probably wouldn't put as much hair. You know, I wouldn't put as much on there in the first place. But if you want to really style it now, now you can go back in and needle felt it and, you know, get it all laying down. It's totally possible to needle felt this into a particular shape. You can tie it, you can needle felt it. I mean, it's just loose wool. So whatever, it'll do whatever you tell it to at this point. It's the same way like with um, mama's hair is kind of applied, you know, the same way, but in a little bigger locks and then just needle felt it after. Now the bun I made independent and actually needle felt it. I put all this hair on first and then I made a little bun and just needle felted it right in place. So that's super easy. And it's the same with, this is, I didn't make her hair very flat, but this little girl's hair is made the same way. And I decided just to let her be big and voluminous, voluminous, what's the word? Voluptuous. <laughs> Voluptuous. I don't know if I've ever heard that for hair. But, <laughs> but this hair was all put on first and then tied. And then you can just go in. This is my fine needle, but you can just go in and flatten it and then take that volume out. So take the volume out with your felting needle. Okay. Any other questions on that? I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to show some, let's show some locks here and I'm going to do a wild, uh, I'm going to do one wild one for Robin Barrett. Wonderful. And Leslie Lansing asked, what gauge of wire is that on the wild hair head? Oh, uh, that's going to be the 12. On the wild hair head, that's going to be the 12. Okay, look, here's some crazy uh, Shetland lamb locks that I have. They're just super fun and wild. And so with this, you could make like a cute granny wig without even fussing, you know, not even worrying about the applying a single lock principle. But here's what I would probably do. I'd play with it a little bit and look at what happens if I put like a little fold in it and make it look like it's a little more of a hairstyle, you see? So now I can just attach that to her head and let the top frock up like that. 
and then we can go back and apply individual locks in other, you know, in other places. But I think there's not I think there's not a whole bunch of rules. You just don't want to, usually I don't stretch hair across a head, but with these crazy locks, you can just go all over the place and it looks like she has more of a hairdo than she does. Let's see what people think. So here's just another, this is just a whole lock. And rather than fuss with it, I'm gonna take that and patch it on there and just give her some volume. She's gonna look like she's been to the beauty parlor. And once I kind of have the basic face I'm kind of figuring out, then I'll go back and probably fill up from here and up to the back and play with these individual locks and position them just exactly where you want them so that they frame her face nicely but what do y'all th they think about that? Do we like her? <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> Is she good? I wanted to just kind of break the mold a little bit and say, you know, while I'm giving you these specific guidelines, there's not necessarily super, super hard rules. But I think that, uh, and I'm going to show some beard stuff too, I think it's easy to, um, I think it's easy to make the hair look a little more lively when you don't try and stretch it across and you don't try and flatten it out. Let the flattening come later and bring in the personality. And you can also, like right here around the face, Go straight down so that it looks a little more um, like it's rooting up from the scalp and then twist it. So I'm open to questions before I show like how to do a beard and stuff. Alrighty, uh, Pam Golding asks, do you make all of your body parts independent? I see your head is on wire. Is that how you do it piece by piece? I, I don't do all of them piece by piece. I do the body. I brought in a body to show too because was it Pam who asked how to attach a head after somebody asked yesterday that they had a head and it wasn't, they wanted to put it on a body and how to do that. So I did bring in a body to show. Okay, that's all I'm gonna do on this, on this lady. I just wanted to say, to show that on some dolls we might, um, uh, I did bring in another doll. On some dolls, we're going to be very specific. Like on this little girl, um, I applied some hair locks down like I showed you. I folded some around here. You can you know, be willing to cut them if they're too long, but these little braids are independent. So the braids were made as an independent piece and the needle felted right into the hair that was already in place. And these little hairs are added at the end, just like I showed you in the beginning, by folding some little piece over and attaching it. And if you do that, it's going to give it a little more life and a little more liveliness. All right, and Jean Denson asks, why do you fill in from the bottom? Just because of how you, you know, how you tend to layer it works really well to fill in, to start at your longest lengths and then fill in from the bottom. Just seems to work really well. Um, so I'm gonna try and do this super, super quick. Can we see this little guy? He volunteered. Robin Barrett asked, here? Robin Barrett asked, how would you do like a 1960s, 1970s troll doll? And he volunteered. I know, I'm gonna have to cover it up later, but if you can see his head. So I brought in magenta because that seems perfect. And with him, now with the troll dolls, they don't have like the greatest, uh, they don't have the greatest hairline. And sometimes it's just this great big wide swath of hair. So with him, I would do the same thing, but I'd probably look at, I would still fold it, but I would probably look at having most of the fold on the inside um, at this point so that you have the length on the outside. So decide where that hairline is and then drive the wool in. He's not gonna be perfect because I am just banging him out. Inside, you don't even have to have so much of a fold, but you can go you know, from this side and then from the other side. I just laid another one right on. Some of you might be too young to know what these troll dolls are, but I think they're back, which you know is the, Anne's nodding. I work with a bunch of millennials here, so. <laughs> Sometimes I just have like blank stares from them <laughs> as I ask him about stuff. 
they might not understand the pet rock. They might not. So notice here, like, look how fast we can get his hair going up. And this is all I would do. With the troll dolls, I don't think you need a bunch of hair, uh, a bunch of hair divisions, but I would just say apply them as long as you can with a minimal fold on the inside. And so this is just my super, super quickie demonstration of how I would do the troll hair. Does that work? <laughs> okay. He is a, yeah, he's not going to be a troll, but for today he decided <laughs> he would do that. Okay, let's look at the beards really fast. I'll set this guy up here. And let's see who, oh, I was gonna bring in a naked guy. Um, we'll, we'll do this guy. I have another crazy head hanging around and this is um, Latte. And why don't we use these locks? Okay, I don't have a lot of practice with these locks, but these locks I got from my friend Lee. Uh, these are not in our stash. These are from my private stash. Uh, this is a Dorset. Lovely white locks. I think they would be great for a Santa. So find locks, buy locks. Build your, build your stash of locks. Now they're kind of hairy, but if I'm building his beard, I'm going to start down below, and you don't even have to fold these ones under because we're going to build up. But start there and anchor these down. If your locks won't stick in, go to a coarser needle, um, or you can put a little bit of fiber on top, but most of the time you won't have a difficult time. Now you can also fold them under like we did before. So start with them kind of upside down, anchor them in, and then fold them over, and then needle felt that so that it stays in that place. And then as you build your beard, I usually put the, you know, the longer pieces on the bottom and the taller pieces on top so that you start to build volume on top. On This is kind of hairy, so I don't know if I want to work with it too much. But let me show you, um, let me show you, when you do a mustache, do the mustache the same way. Don't stretch a mustache across. Do a mustache in the halves. And you'll see that if you go ahead and needle felt it in the middle, but then fold that curly side over. I should practice with these. Fold this curly side over that it's gonna look more realistic than if you, I can't grab onto these. Here we go. Then if you stretch them across. So let me just get his other half in and we'll sculpt them down so that they kind of lay down. So he's going perfect. <laughs> Funny little face. We've had a couple people ask, how do you get the skin so smooth? Or, or how do you get such a smooth texture with needle felting? Oh, isn't that what we did in the beginning? If you didn't, um, I do it just as I showed you in the beginning. And that is, um, and I have like a simple little video for needle felting a mushroom where I kind of show the same idea. And it's just to make a nice firm foundation and then needle felt that cover layer on top. And you can make it rock hard or you can make it firm, but the firmer it is, then the more you have like a sort of a, a firm foundation to needle felt your top layer into. So when you do a mustache, when you do eyebrows, separate those from the side. When you build, if you build up your beard, let me grab another guy, from the, the base layer up, like this, even with the hair, then that's how you, it's the same with doing the head on the, on the, the hair on the head is doing the beard. I'm gonna start with these layers way down here first and then stack them on top. And that's how you'll get the nice volume. And you can always make, also make sure that you put your tinier layers on top. So this is again, the combination, a combination of two different types of locks. Is this helpful or what questions can I answer that I'm not answering? Well, uh, it's very, very helpful. We've had a lot of people say thank you. This is great information. Um, we do have a few questions. Let's see. I'm going to have to finish this lady. She should yes. be like a Mrs. Claus. <laughs> <laughs> Antis, yes. I have to make her a Mrs. Claus. I know that I'm not the most, um, 
I would say experimental with hairstyles. I'm gonna turn this up just a little bit. And that is, I think that um, as, as within, so without, like I'm the same with my hair, I'm the plain Jane hair. So I found that I don't do a whole lot with dolls, but I just wanted to see, is this helpful and does this give you some ideas on how to work with your doll hair? All right, and uh, just a, a couple of questions. Let's see, uh, Pam Golding asked, have you ever done a Santa curl with merino wool? Somebody on the page suggested I wet felt curls. Yeah, I haven't done it, um, but I've seen what they do. <clears throat> And I don't have it. Here's a skewer. <clears throat> For those of you, Pam is talking about, you're going to take a strip of your merino or your roving and usually draft it out so that it's a little bit, uh, a little bit expanded, a little bit less the lengths or a little bit less overlapped. And you're going to twist it around a stick and twist it really tight. So you're gonna twist it around a stick and actually you're gonna drop this into like hot water, I don't know if these hot soapy water or hot water and let it cool off. So if you push it up a little bit, I think it'll stay. And then you'll drop that in like a tub of hot water and then let it cool off and then let it sit. After it cools off, take it out and let it sit to dry and that'll give you more ringlets that are kind of similar to this or in some cases more like Shirley Temple style ringlets. So I haven't done it. Um, I guess I just never really went for the ringlets, but um, I will, I'll do it. I'll, I'll, I'll do it and I'll post them. Mm -hmm. Alrighty, and Lori Alviar asks, uh, what would you suggest for very sleek hair? For very sleek hair, like they do on fancy little dolls, is mohair. And usually you have to buy the mohair. You could do mohair or you could do the Surrey alpaca, neither of which we have. But for the mohair, uh, what you'll find is really long mohair is what you want and it needs to be combed out and conditioned. Um, it's like, takes a lot of effort. The same with the Surrey alpaca. Washing it, combing it out, you're gonna get a lot of loss, um, meaning all the short fibers are gonna go away and all the fuzzies are gonna go away, but it basically needs to be, if you want a super sleek hair like they do on a lot of um, commercial dolls or the re rooting hair in dolls, and I can't even think of the name of the dolls, it's sort of outside of my scope, um, they're using mohair and Surrey alpaca, and it's a long mohair, and Surrey alpaca are the really long locks. Uh, they need to be combed and conditioned and really treated. Alrighty, and then Cece Smith asked a, a fun question, which okay. is, what is your favorite fiber for hair? Oh, what's my favorite? Locks. Just lo just locks. I just love locks for hair. Like, locks, locks, locks. I'm just kind of crazy about locks. So I was telling the girls that most of all my original dolls, I just put locks on. Those dolls may not have ears, and they may just get as much of a frock of a lock as this. So for me, I just love the natural characteristic of a lock, and I don't mind if it dyed crazy colors. But for me, just sheep's locks are so precious, and I love using those. Mm -hmm. Great question, Cece. So all the gals are here. We have a couple of things we want to show you, a couple of new things. So that's all the time we have for our doll hair segment today. I hope it's been helpful. And we want to show you a few new things. So who's going to go first? Oh, Hannah's going to go first, and she's going to show you. We want to show you a couple of our new products in person. So I'm going to let them go. Hey, everybody. How are y'all doing? All right, so I'm going to show y'all our newest roller in our line of Nikki and Nikki felting tools. This is our mini roller. It's very small. It's got to be, what, eight inches or so? Mm -hmm. um, perfect for small projects, but what we really want to utilize it for, or want to see everyone utilize it for, is wet felting projects that are like a vessel, a shoe, or a purse because it fits just beautifully inside the item, so you can felt the inside very easily, which is something that we thought was pretty cool, and, and that's why we brought it into the store. So right now it's $22.49, but um, from after the show, show um, we're gonna go ahead and put all of our Nikki and Nikki tools 
on sale for 10 percent off up until friday so if y'all put in an order either earlier today or if y'all put one in later on this week it'll be 10 percent off all of our nikki and nikki tools thank y'all thanks <laughs> Alrighty guys, hope you're feeling fun and in the Christmas spirit. <laughs> so we got new thing today. We are done with our 10 by 10 foams and we are upgrading to 12 by 12. I know you can't see it right here, but it is bigger. So the reason we did this is it works great for these um, 8 by 10, uh, 8 by 11 felt sheets. They work, they cover the whole surface so you can have that whole backing right there. And it's absolutely great. It's great for working on big projects, um, just keeping stuff flat and everything like that. So we are super excited about our wow. bigger size. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And I have one last thing I want to share with you. And that is we are very, very proud to bring in the unicorn line of wash, scour, and rinse products. I have all those here for you. Some of you know that I'm super fussy about our locks and especially when it's our finest locks and the locks that we want the cleanest they can possibly be. We use Unicorn Beyond Clean. They come in two sizes. They're 16 ounces and four ounces. Anne's gonna hand me that. Great, so here's the 16 ounce and here's the four ounce. So there's three different products. There is the Fiber wash, which you can use for any of your wearables and your finished fiber projects, whether that's a scarf or if you want to give your customers something really nice to wash with, the Beyond Fiber Wash. The Beyond Clean is the same as their Power Scour, so this is what removes lanolin, grease, and muck if you're washing uh, raw locks. And then Beyond Soft is basically a conditioner or a rinse for your products. And the reason I like them, and I've used them for longer than we've sold them, I brought them in because so often people ask me about it. And what I love about them is they're made in the USA, they're highly, highly biodegradable, um, so they're super earth friendly, and this beyond is their unfragranced line, so no fragrance, and that's what's really important. So they have, the girls, y'all had, had to do a smell test, right? Mm -hmm. I gave them all the smell tests. And you might notice a slight scent, but there's no fragrance added. There's no fillers, there's no phosphates, um, no coloring at all. So this is awesome stuff, I totally stand by it. And you don't have to get it from us, but we do carry it if you want it. <laughs> we wanted you to know. Somebody asked a really good question, going back to the Nikki and Nikki tools, mm -hmm. Renee Gatewood asked, how do you care for them? Dry them out. Just dry them out, that's all you gotta do, dry them out. You know, you could you could put like a tongue oil on them or an almond oil if you want to, if you want to treat it like a butcher block, but you don't need to. If you're using an olive oil soap, it's already going to have some, you know, some oil in it. But I would say just dry them out. And one last question. Mm -hmm. How does the scour work on super dirty lock tips? Yeah, yeah. The scour, look, if this doesn't get it white, the girls know. If this doesn't get it white, it's not going to get white. That's what I say. Like some fleece just won't get white. But this stuff will work on that lanolin. So the super dirty lock tips are greasy and they're holding on to the muck. If you're washing your own fleece, um, what you want to do is get the fiber in with minimal water with the soap and you can bang on the lock just like this. Just tap, tap, tap to help break up that concentration of dirt. But um, if this won't get it white, um, there is a product actually that's a whitener and I've tried it. I can show that to you next time. But I want to tell you it is so strongly fragranced that it took days for the fragrance to get out of my fiber. Um, so it's safe to use on wool, but man does it smell strong. So that's what I would say. Works good. Okay, are we ready? All right. Okay, so we're going to give away some presents, which is one of our favorite, favorite things to do. Anne's bringing in the prize packages. And before we pull, I'm going to show you one more thing. We're starting to bring in these lovely, lovely yarns. We're starting in with just the plain white and the black. These are from DHG, just a very well-respected fiber producer. Our friends in Italy, some of you know. And these are lovely fibers to felt with. It's just lightly spun 19 micron merino top. So absolutely gorgeous. We have plain white and black. We'll bring in some other colors later, but these will be on the site by Saturday. Good. Okay, so we're going to pull some prizes. Who's going to go first? Anne, want to go first? I'm going to go first. I'm dropping dolls. <laughs> You got intertwined. Okay. 
Donna Duda. Yay! Yay! Donna, congratulations. Well, she went in. Donna wins two of our new unicorn <laughs> <laughs> fiber. Uh, she wins, goodness, uh, the Beyond Soft and, and uh, the Beyond Fiber Wash. Yay! So this will be really good. Awesome. <laughs> congratulations. Okay, Jordan's going to check. Lucky winner is Pam Golding. Yay, Yay, Pam, congratulations. See what happens when you ask questions and you contribute to the conversation. You get to win stuff. Alrighty. Oh, and cool. Pam wins a one of our new 12 by 12 foams and your choice of three of our 100% wool felt sheets. Yay, <laughs> that's nice. I like the colors you chose. Cute. <laughs> okay, I'm going to pick one. <laughs> mix them up, mix them up, mix them up. Thanks for playing with us, y'all. Thanks for spending time with us today.